Good afternoon and welcome everyone again to the Orthman Scriptal Conference in South Africa. Um, I'd like to welcome a couple of gentlemen uh, that is joining us today live uh, today. Um, um, Johannes from Liquigro, by welcome, by dankie dat jylle vandag hier is, is a voorrecht. Thank you. Um, Mick from Orthman uh, Manufacturing in the US and uh, Nicholas from Surefire Ag um, in the US. Thank you gentlemen and uh, it's going to be some interesting discussions that we're going to have today here. Um, I think I'm just going to kick off, Mick, uh, if you're happy with that, I think we're going to kick off and maybe just get a couple of questions from obviously, you know, the liquid. I know you and I had some discussions about liquid fertilizer and, and all that type of stuff. So um, I think it's a, a great opportunity, a good opportunity for people to get om om oor kunsmis te praat, jy weet, want ek dink daar's 'n daar's 'n daar's 'n goeie deel in Afrika ook wat vloeibaar kunsmis kan gebruik uh, om Johannes. En uh, ek weet ons ons het nou 'n paar jy weet uh, daar teruggesit en gesels oor jy weet um, ken jy mense wat wat striptel doen ehm um, uh, vandag. Ja ja. Ons het baie jare terug al begin in Swaziland uh, in groot met jullie implement gewerk uh, en dan van die gronde wat diepere zit hulle nou met alle uh, eierrippers gewerk maar dit was ook op die bane gewees uh, en dan hulle op die bane geplant so dit is een ding wat baie baie jare al kom mm. van die 19s af 90er jare af so uh, ja dit, uh, die groot voordele was daai tyd om die saad met skoon te kry uh, ons kon die bewerkingsdiepte stel wat belangrijk was, want verschillende gronden, uit verschillende dieptes en verschillende kleipresentaties gehad. So jy, jy kan nie al die gronden die cellen diepte bewerk het nie. Mm. Uh, en daar was dan ook gepreplant met die goeders. Uh, ons het differentieel bemes, ons het daarmee begin in, in Swaziland in Ledingstad, uh, en ons het differentieel bemes, so baie van die bemesingstoffe was voor die tijd geplaas. Nie met die planters nie, en dit het baie gehelp om hy vreselike hoog opbrengt te kan afval. Yeah. And um, <coughs> just before I carry on, um, uh, for I can, uh, please, uh, person, uh, we will be checking our Zoom feeds, uh, Facebook as well. Um, and we just, we just want to say, if, if, if everyone can just put their the, uh, mics on mute, if you have any questions, as you'll have fry it, stick your hand up, as a belief. Um, we will definitely uh, answer those questions during this episode. Um, so, as a fragus, please ask us the questions. That is why we are sitting here today to answer those questions. Um, so, yes, excuse me, Johannes. Hmm. I, I, I will need that. Yes, yes. Um, and then the the following one is: see any difference between of the ja in, in, in verschillende hmm. strepteel praktijken praktijken um, ja praktijken um, je weet om om kunstmisplaatsing je weet ja, kunstmisplaatsing te doen uh, ons het hier al groot verschillen gezien op uh, uh, elke jaar het zij een ideale plaats uh, in die natjare kan jij kunstmis boerbi grond plaats uh, en jij kan stikstof boerbi grond zet en jij kan Fosfate vlak sit. In die droer jare is het ideaal om dit pikkie dieper te kry. Uh, so as mens die plaasing kan varieer of laat jy verskillende dieptes plaas, het jy eindelijk baie groot voordeel, want jy kan kyk, jy begin jy met natgrond, like die, is het El Nino, is Lanina, uh, en dan kan jy verskillende plaasings doen. Hmm. En, en, en dit is redig groot verskil tussen nat en droog. Ja. En om dit kan aanpas is een baie groot Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Mika, I, th I know I answered the well asked the question there. I don't know, maybe you got, you can bring in something from the US. Was that question, do you see the differences uh, between strips and other fertilizer application methods? Um, I know you and I have that we've had that discussion, you know, you've obviously seen a lot of differences because you guys use a lot of liquid fertilizer in the US. Correct. Um, you know, it's about timing when we think about liquid versus dry and we need time we need moisture and we need time to break those dry frills down 
And the difference between liquid and dry is liquids available right now where we need time, moisture, and bacteria to, to break those prills down in, in a dry situation. So that's the differences that I see primarily as an agronomist. Okay. And then obviously, which will come through, we'll get back to Nicholas um, on the surefire system, um, you know, especially when it comes to the liquid grow. I know, I mean, honestly, them, we've, we had this, or well, they showed some liquid fertilizer uh, to me a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago. Um, and I think this is going to be a great opportunity for us to use the surefire ag um, systems here, here in Africa, actually. Um, so, to be honest, just to go back to, you know, the next question is, um, how do you see the improvement in, in nutrients? Uh, yeah. Um, I, that, that is a, that is a, that is a uh, verschil. Uh, en daar is beslissen, daar gaan een verschuiving wees in, in, in die gebruik van vooral pee, denk ik, wat baie dier is. Uh, en dan om dit uh, effectief neer te zetten. Dat wil sê, precies waar je wil hee, uh, denk ik, gaan jy met minder pee kan wegkom, wat voor jou een baie groot voordeel in die economie kan wees, vooral als ons nog liederkansmisprysen gaan krijgen. al die aandeling is dat het dierder gaan word. Hmm. So die goeders word net baie dieder en dieder. Uh, en dan het ons natuurlijk uh, pia neutrale uh, kunstmis. Uh, hy is nie sier nie. Um, en jy kan hom dan bykie dieper en bykie vlakker plaas. Uh, uh, die zones wat ons kry, wat, wat die ander kunstmisstoffe versier in die grond, uh, bring meer dat daar uh, moviese klomp kalk toegedien moet word, wat weer ook bijgeteld moet word. So as jy een pia neutrale uh, ding het, wat nie ladings dra nie, en wat baie effectief kan wees, dat wil sê, jy kan met baie min recht kom. Ons, ons kunstmis hoef nie omgeskakel te word na die orthoform nie, hy sla in die orthoform, so hy is baie, hy is dadelijk opneembaar, en hy versier nie die grond nie. So, uh, uh, of jy om vlak plaas, of jy om diep plaas, uh, ons gaan nie die zones versier nie, wat een baie, baie groot voordeel is. Nee, dankie. En dan, die laaste ene is, um, efficiency uh, van die, jy weet, van die verskillende kunstmis in die, in die, in, in da, uh, kan ek sê, in ons landbouwbedrijf. Die uh, effectiviteit. Ja, effect, ja. Ja, wat soos ek nou nou gesê, die effectiviteit gaan een baie groot rol speel in die volhoudbare landbouw. Mm. Uh, as jy, as jy uh, klomgeld moet spandeer aan fosfaat, en dit word nog vastgeleid in die grond, omdat hy ladings dra, uh, gaan dit een baie groter uitgave wees op een van die dag, als om een klein bykie recht te plaas by die wortels. Uh, misschien is het die volgende vraag, maar jy het, waar plaas jy jou kunstmis? Uh, en as jy jou wortels in, moet, in die voedingsstoffe en die natgrond, die water, moet op die selle plek wees. Dit helpt nie, jou voedingsstoffe sit boe en jou wortels is onder en die water is onder nie kan jy net die voedingsstoffe opnemen. So om die kunst is, wat jy moet recht kry is, jy moet die goed saam op die iselle plek kry, en jy moet het vir die langste tyd van die seisoen, wat hy milie of sonneblom of wat ook al lewe, moet hy te daar wees. Dit helpt nie nie, hy is vir twee weke daar, en dan is hy weer nie daar nie. So mens moet poog, dit is ook om hulle bykie vlakker plaas in een nat seisoen, en in een droos seisoen bykie dieper plaas, want dan is die vocht bykie dieper. So dit hang alles af van die drie goed wat my mekaar moet wees, ja. en dan die tyd moet ook, ja. die langste tyd moet ook daar so, wees. So, Mick, I think, you know, this, this comes down to, you know, with our trials that we do is, um, you know, that one question, efficiency affecting the fertilizer industry. I think, you know, it, it comes down to, is, you know, where's that fertilizer placed? Exactly like Mianus just discussed about now, is exactly where is that, that fertilizer placed? Uh, we've seen that, you know, we, we spoke about yes. that yesterday in, in, the, in those root, in those root balls, um, you know, with the hairs and all that type of stuff. So, um, I don't know, do you, do you have anything that you want to share from your end? You know, we, we see that placement. Uh, Orthman has been committed to doing strip till research and, and placement trials for a lot of years and we, we've seen that that placement is very important. And, and as I said yesterday, and I can't say it enough, roots don't 
have sensors on them that say, hey, there's nutrients over there, I'm going to go get them. They grow by gravity and temperature change and placing that nutrient right below that planted seed, you can't ask for a better spot to do that. Johannes, how important is it to have a kind of a in the right place? It is absolutely fatal to sit on the wrong place. We have now seen that as you, for example, we have a profile gehad and now we have seen that the wortels are not able to get the right verdichting. So the combination of wortel groei wat jy kan stimuleer en daarom in die grond zone in, dat hy nie net 6 duim onder die grond leen nie, en dan die plaasing van die kinsmis, soos ek nou gesê, by die vog en by die wortelgroei, is van kardinale belang, ja, absoluut baie belangrik. En die systeme wat nou uit Amerika kom, is interessant met die white drops, wat ons ook op een laat stadium kan stikstof gee, ook na by die plant, baie, baie goeie resultaat hier die jaar ook gelewe. So die plaasing is baie belangrijk. En het kost geld om dit verkeerd te plaas, jy weet. Yes, and that's exactly what we spoke about yesterday. Mianus has said here now, it costs money if you don't place it in the right place. Exactly. So, Mianus, ek weet ek skip nou een paar vraag na die soms. Goed recht. Ehm, Denk jy die grondstruktuur is baie belangrik in kropproduksie? Ja, kijk grondstruktuur en grondtekstuur in die grondzone, as jy nou profiel kyk en jy het verskillende tekstuure en verskillende struktuure, bepaal het eindelijk hoe diep jy moet werk. So die grond sê eindelijk vir jou, ek wil 20 centimeter gewerk word en jy wil ek 30 centimeter gewerk word. So dit speel een ontzettende groot rol in die bewerkingsdiepte, speel een baie groot rol in wortelontwikkeling, en dan speel het een baie groot rol in die natuurlijke vruchtbaarheid van een grond. So jou hoer kleigronde gaan een hoer natuurlijke vruchtbaarheid hee, en jy kan met minder bemesting klaarkom, en jou sandgronde het een laar, laar kleipresentatie, en natuurlijk geen structuur nie, en hulle moet jy natuurlijk baie hoer bemes, so dit speel een baie groot rol in bewerkingskostes, diepte van bewerking en bemesting. Baie groot rol, ja. So, I'm going to just add something maybe in here, Mick. I know you and I discussed this yesterday, is with the amount of rainfall that we've had this year, it's something wat ons is nooit gewoond aan hier so baie rainfall nie. Ek weet, ons het nie die vraag, jy weet, gevraag, maar, jy weet, ek denk, net om die mense wat nou gaan kyk is, weet, wat sy rol speel so baie reen, eindelijk, met die groeitijd, om in die kunstmisplaasing, en, you know, we've seen that now as well this year with our trials, that, you know, so much rain, we saw that, you know, there's, where we ripped at 450, you know, the water filtration was fine, it was 100% fine, Um, you know, we still placed that fertilizer at 180 mils, um, but where we just where we just strip tilled at 180 and 250, um, you know, there was still that little inconsistency. There wasn't that consistent um, growth of that height, that plant height. Um, so th this money that I will deal is here are to us on trials to do it. Uh, waar ons nou um, gerip het, 450 en gestript al, het baie beter gedoen. Um, ons het nou gesien, jy weet, die, die plant sy groei, was, hy was baie meer groen. Um, jy weet, daar was, a, jy kan duidelijk sien die verskil tussen waar ons net gestript al, en waar ons gerip en gestript al het. Um, jy weet, waar die, ek denk persoonlijk, manier die waterfiltratie was net baie beter Jy weet, ek praat nou, I'm talking about just this year. Hierdie jaar is een heel te maan een jaar waar we've never experienced, well, I think it, ek denk het het 
gebeur, ek weet nie, ek is nog te jong om te ja, gebeur van, jaar, ja. you know, I'm still young for that, but I think back in the years, it, it obviously did happen, but, you know, to see exactly how, what RIP does for the water filtration is, is enormous. Ek weet nie of oom ja. iets daar oor te praat. Of? Ja, absoluut, ach, jy, uh, al die voordele van geen bewerking in Noutel het eindelijk die ouwens hierdie jaar nie voet geskiet. Want hulle het minder vochtverlies gehad, uh, daar was blaar bedekking, um, en die gronde het net baie natter, te vinnig te nat geworden. En dan is daar groot story oor die sierstof, hoe dieper jy gewerk het die jaar, um, het jy bykie meer vocht uitgejaag, uh, jy het een bykie meer sierstof in die grond gehad, en die baie reen het nie so groot invloed gehad, uh, op die planten, soos waar hulle nou in, in, met nog natter grond begin het nie, en waar dan minder sierstof in die grond was van die begin af nie. So daar is so een klomp goeders wat een rol gespeel het, en uh, die vlakbewerkings op die sandgronde het hierdie jaar glad nie gewerkt. Of geen bewerkings op sandgronde het verskrikkelijk baie verdichtings veroorzaak, en dit het maar uh, een van die groot probleme geskip. Uh, hoe dieper die bewerking op die sande was, hoe beter Mick, I know you guys, you know, you guys get a lot of snow, so there's a lot of moisture there. Um, <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe um, Nicholas has a lot of snow, I'm not sure. Nicholas? <laughs> same, same as Mick, we're light on snow this year. <laughs> um, but yes, I know you guys get a lot of snow there in the U.S., um, so that, you know, that's where Striptal came in, is, you know, to, heat, to warm up and heat up that those, those um, you know, those bands, those strips for the growth. But here in South Africa, we just witnessed, we witnessed it in a different situation where we just have too much rain, I guess. Right. You know, and, and I know that that's one thing that we talk about a lot in strip till. Uh, and, and I personally don't try to talk about it uh, very much because we talk about warming those strips. As you get from the center of the U.S. where I am and northward, we definitely need to do that. From here south, and uh, you really don't need that. But the one thing it does for us, the strip till, where it's a little bit warmer, is it creates a more consistent temperature profile. Uh, that profile is more consistent than, uh, say, a no-till or a conventional tillage pass where that temperature stays consistent in the area of that strip, therefore promoting that early root growth mm. with the consistency. Yeah. So, to be honest, I don't know if there is anything else that you want to talk about. Uh, you know, I know that we have talked about that day, that kinsmus, that flywaar kinsmus, that we have talked about today. I don't know if, I know, um, you know, I know it's a system that Nicholas is now up. Um, you know, Nicholas is online. Uh, you know, we'll we'll have no discussions with it. And Nicholas, uh, thanks for joining us. I think you know this is a great opportunity for us to to discuss this this new application uh, or system that we can provide here now in South Africa, especially to support guys like Umiyanas and them from Liquid Grow. Um, you know, I think they have they have a they have a premium product. We can supply a premium product as well to put the to use this the system. Yeah, I absolutely. Could, yeah. Thanks for inviting. Right. Uh, I was just going to say thanks for the invite. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, we be so. What we've seen it this year is as you feeding stuff on different places have placed so a bit in the fore. Um, Upper by a knob in the millipet, and a bit deeper, it uh, is a better start to cry as others of your plek. So, the verdeling van voedingstof plaatsing like my uh, gaan het rol spelen in the toekomst, mm. om je goed as die vinnige rij die wind uit te kry en bietjie nader in die pit, en soos een pop-up, mm. en dan weer bietjie dieper. Mm. So, dit gaan alles help met die stelsel wat jylle nou bezig is om in te bring. Yes. En die akkurate plaatsing daarvan, uh, die ouwe sê vir my, uh, bijvoorbeeld die pop-ups wat hulle van ons bemesting op die pit sit, uh, waar hulle 50 liter sit en waar hulle 80 liter neersit, 
is daar vreselijk groot verschil geweest. So die accuratheid van plaatsen en die, om die recht hoeveelheid te plaatsen gaan een baie goed rol speel. Nick, um, I think you've got some, actually got some information that you would like to share with us, um, you know, from a, on a you know, perspective of the system that we have. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have that system here with me today um, due to obviously our area is a little small. But I think, Nick, Nicholas, if you, if you could maybe show us uh, or maybe just explain to us, you know, what, what is this product? What is this new product that, that we can offer the clients today here in Africa? So I put together a few slides, and I won't share all of them with you guys just because uh, uh, how many I got put together and uh, the short time that we got. So let me share that uh, presentation. Um, and while I'm sharing that, I'll talk a little bit. Surefire is a company that's about 15 years old. Uh, I was the first hire 15 years ago. And uh, can you guys see that at all? Not yet. All right, let me hit it again. All right, how about now? Yep, there we go. There we go. All right, uh, there you go. So uh, once again, Surefire's 15 years old. Ever since I can remember, um, we've had a relationship with Orphan, um, doing uh, mainly stuff here in the United States on, on strip till. Uh, you know, that relationship has expanded over the years, but uh, we've always had a, a good relationship uh, throughout the last 15 years of, of Surefire. Uh, when it comes to liquid application systems, Surefire puts together a, a nice kit. You guys give us the information uh, that you're looking uh, to put a system on, whether that be uh, an eight-row strip till bar, uh, eight-row planner, uh, whatever that might be. Uh, we're going to put together that system, and we're going to give you something from uh, one of these three categories. First thing we're going to need from you is the flow rate. That's going to allow us to size the plumbing, uh, size the pump. Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, I've worked with Brian in the past and he's been able to get this information from the farmer and he relays it to us and then a, a group of guys here put together quotes. So we need we need the rate that you're trying to put down. Um, next thing we need to know is what kind of technology are we going to integrate into? Are we going to tie into, uh, we tie into most of the eight major ag platforms. Uh, we have our own ISO controller uh, as well. So we're going to know what type of technology you've already got in your cab that we need to tie into. And then uh, we need to know what type of distribution system. So that gallons per acre rate, and if you're doing prescription mapping or, or anything like that is gonna tell us what type of uh, distribution system you're gonna need on all your rows. Uh, our goal is to be very accurate row to row. Um, just like you guys were talking about getting your fertilizer in the right place, mm -hmm. it's important for us to make sure we get the right amount down. Um, we wanna make sure you get the right amount on every row and not just on one row and the rest of them are off. So we wanna make sure we get the right amount down uh, on each individual row. And you guys are gonna take care of the, of the placement there. Um, so the, the backbone of our plumbing system starts with metering tube. Uh, Brian's got a, a display stand over there and he's got some metering tube samples. And uh, the, the metering tube is gonna give you uh, going to replace your traditional disc corpus that you would see on every row. And the reason we want to get rid of that disc corpus is it's kind of the smallest part in the entire plumbing system uh, that you have. And so by making that smallest part a little bit bigger, it allows us to change the plumbing. You know, for example, we'll use a 20 mesh filter uh, on all of our rows, or sorry, a 20 mesh filter on all of our systems because we don't need to, to filter down to that 80 mesh or that 100 mesh uh, you know, screen that you would have on a normal fertilizer system. So by getting rid of, uh, you know, that, that plugging orifice and by getting rid of cleaning filters, that's a common thing that can happen in, in liquid fertilizer, now you can spend more time up and running uh, throughout the field. So we want to we want to look at that, that plumbing package that we provide, and the backbone of that for us is going to include a metering tube and a 20 mesh filter. You guys all know how much fun it is to clean filters, and we don't want to do that. Uh, so that metering tube, when we look at the row-to-row -row accuracy, uh, you can see on this page where we look at uh, thousands of data points uh, through our tests, and that most of the time our, our uh, uh, coefficient of variation is about 3.9% uh, from row-to-row, -row, so that's pretty darn accurate when you start talking about everything that's going on in a fertilizer system. Uh, and so extremely accurate row-to-row. 
a lot of times we'll put two on every row. And this is our most basic plumbing package here where we'll have two metering tubes on the row and it allows you to switch between the two tubes uh, by just changing uh, the check valve that you're running through. Uh, so this is a pretty common plumbing package uh, that we would use. It would look somewhat like this on a, on a toolbar uh, where you could turn off each individual row. Uh, the blue and the purple tube are your orifices on each row. Uh, think of getting rid of that disc orifice and using that tube uh, instead. Uh, so this is gonna be a pretty common plumbing package. The next step up from that is what we call liquid shift. And this is actually what Brian's got in his display stand. And it automatically changes your plumbing routing based off uh, the pressure that you're building in your system. So as you guys are going through the field and you may increase speed, uh, you may increase speed and increase fertilizer rates with some sort of prescription map, uh, then this is what allows that plumbing package to work for you. So uh, we run two metering tubes to every row, and it would automatically switch between those two tubes. Nick, I'm so gonna, something that is pretty common. Go ahead. I'm going to quickly climb in here. Maybe you can just answer this question. Um, uh, if there's anyone, I don't know. I know we've got some guys sitting here with us watching, but I can't see if there's any questions. Is there any questions on Facebook or nothing? All right. So, uh, um, Nicholas, my question here is, and I think you may touched on this topic earlier on, is, how many products can we put down on the row? So let's, for, let's say, for instance, is there two different types of products we can put down on the row? Uh, let's say, for instance, on the seed or long, uh, next to the seed? Or So a lot of it's going to depend on the plan that you guys put in place uh, on your farm and your farming practices. Uh, the most common placements is two different placements on the row. Um, but that could be multiple products. Uh, so we see some guys that are just putting down uh, FOSS and then nitrogen, and then they'll inject s different things into those lines. I did a fertilizer system last year on a planter where they were putting down six products with two different placement methods. So cool. three of the products were injecting into the phosphorus and going down in the furrow, and uh, one product was injecting into the nitrogen and going down beside the row. So it just kind of depends on uh, what they're looking to do. I would say that's not very common to see six products uh, with two different placement methods. It's more, way more common to see two liquids, you know, you know some sort of phosphorus and some sort of nitrogen uh, down on each individual row. Um, is, yeah. is by far more common than, yeah. than the six product. But we do do those uh, types of systems. They're very customized and uh, require a lot of uh, detail to put a package t together like that. Um, to be honest, is that is that something when you you would look you would yeah, yeah. about? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here, here in one of my slides, I'll show you guys our injection pump. So you just have a small pump that that you know can get down to one ounce a minute that would inject something into the stream of uh, your phosphorus or or your nitrogen, depending on what you're what you're trying to do. Good question. Um, I had one more slide here on liquid ship, just kind of show you guys what the plumbing uh, layout looks like uh, when we start talking about individual plumbing. And then our, our newest option uh, that, that uh, right now we just did a limited release on, um, and depending on how the spring goes, which we're pretty confident, you know, we'll have a, a full release uh, next summer. Um, that bottom right picture is a control valve on each individual row. Uh, so guys that are wanting to do uh, a prescription kind of a you know a turn comp with prescription map uh, that could vary across the toolbar. Uh, this is this is what the guy needs. Um, you know this is going to be a stepper motor on each each individual row and controlled by that flow meter that's in the top right corner. There'd be a, a, a flow meter on each individual row as well. Um, that top left picture is kind of what that looks like on a on a John Deere display. Uh, so you guys uh, know what that looks like. Yeah. Um, but you're basically controlling your liquid fertilizer on each individual row. Uh, one other product uh, that I wanted to show you guys is, is for the guy that doesn't want to control on each individual row, we can still monitor on each individual row. And we get back to that discussion about getting uh, the fertilizer in the right place and getting the right amount. This is what tells us in the cab that we're getting the right amount on each individual row. Uh, by putting that flow meter, the Sentinel flow meter from Surefire, you can see how much uh, flow is on each individual row. And on some displays, you know, John Deere and uh, uh, the Climate Field View mapping system, you can see 
uh, and record your flow that is placed on on uh, each individual row. Um, that would kind of replace the old red balls. A lot of people are familiar with those. We still sell quite a bit of them where you would have a ball floating on each individual row. Uh, but you can tell when you got a uh, uh, some dust blowing around and uh, things like that, or a product, um, a liquid fertilizer product that's, you know, um, you can't see through, you know, like in that picture in the middle, that doesn't always work the best when we start talking about red balls. So using that sentinel flow meter on each individual row is something that, that uh, can be beneficial to help you make sure you're getting the, the right amount uh, down. Um, this is the, the same ISO rate controller that I was talking about earlier. It does individual row control. It does basic rate control uh, as well. Um, across your toolbar. That's what we've set up uh, Brian with in the past and things have worked uh, well there. Um, so one ECU does that row monitoring like we talked about or it does regular rate control or it does individual row control. So those are kind of the, the three things that that one ECU can uh, do. And I just want to throw a couple screenshots in there uh, so you guys had uh, those available to you. Um, and how many products does it do again, Nick? Um, two or three? So the current software does three on this ECU. We can stack uh, ECUs together um, and so we can get more than those three products like we were talking about earlier in that scenario where a guy wanted to do six. Um, but three covers all, you know, probably 98% of, of uh, what we're doing. Um, and then there is some tests this spring that will uh, give us the ability to do four products on the one rate controller moving from three to four uh, this spring so um, and just just, just go yeah, ahead go ahead uh, Nicholas we'll we'll catch up on a few I don't know how many slides you still have but we'll we'll get to that I, question later I just was going to show a couple pictures of the pumps that we use mm -hmm. uh, this is our hydraulic pump uh, Brian's got a sample there if anybody wants to see that thing um, in person uh, it it mounts uh, just about anywhere and can pull product from just about anywhere. It's a little bit different than a centrifugal pump that a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, this has tremendous suction and we've had good luck with it on planters, sell several thousand of those uh, every year and uh, it's just it's been a predictable bulletproof pump for us. And then our electric pump system, so on our lower rate stuff, you know, uh, guys doing maybe, you know, five gallons of, of a product on an eight row strip to bar, you know, you would use something like this. Um, not as much suction, but it does have the ability to, to, if you mount it close to the tank handle, you know, rates like that as well. And then uh, the flow meter uh, that, you know, we have a flow meter uh, with no moving parts, so no turbine inside and, uh, uh, you know, don't have to worry about get something getting stuck in that flow meter, Teflon tape or something out of your, your tank. And that same flow meter technology is used on every row. So uh, if a guy wants to to put the flow meter on each row, it would be the same electromagnetic uh, technology. And then the last pump I wanted to share with you guys is that injection pump that does do the small rates. Uh, I know we've talked about this a little bit, uh, but this is the pump models that will get us down into that one uh, ounce a minute per row, which is a very low rate when we start talking about injecting um, products into you know phosphorus or nitrogen, some microbiologicals or, or some stabilizers. So these are that, that's the pump for that. Um, and then I just have some links here I wanted to share with you guys and see uh, if you, what other questions you may have. I know, Brian, you had one. Yeah, so I think, to be honest, uh, I think the, the, the biggest question, I think, Nicholas, you and I have, we've spoken about this before, and um, I, think, I think it's belangrijk is, you weet, what's the type of kunstmus kan dier die systeem gaan? What type of fertilizer can go through the system? Um, I know in South Africa, our fertilizer is, is um, who say means, um, I won't say dirty, am I correct? It, it's more, there's a lot of material in our, yes. in our, in our fertilizer. Yeah, you, you get uh, clear liquids and then you've got uh, suspensions and, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of guys, I a lot of guys, uh, you know, that, that, is a, that is a thing here. And, and, and this is where we're wanting to bring this system in is to help that. Um, so I don't know, Nicholas, I know you and I have spoken about this, you know, about yeah. the system, what it can handle. I think that what we're doing is perfect for, uh, to use your word, to use dirty fertilizer. You know, I had 
some customers um, tell me they needed an 80 mesh filter or a 100 mesh filter because they did have dirty fertilizers and they wanted to get that out. And I go, you guys are missing the point. We're using a 20 mesh filter because that gets the stuff out that we need to get out. The metering tube combination uh, by having that bigger inside diameter and not using a disc orifice or not using a spray tip allows us to run bigger chunks of fertilizer through our plumbing package. And so our fertilizer is going to work, our package is going to work with clean uh, fertilizer. It's going to work with dirty fertilizer. It's going to work with microbiologicals. Uh, I have customers that do organic material uh, fish guts, and that's, it's got quite a bit of chunks in it. And so because we're using metering tube instead of a disc orifice, it allows us to do that wide range of products. So if you can get it through a 20 mesh filter, you can get it through our Surefire system. Yeah. So think about how much larger that 20 mesh filter screen is than an 80 or a, a 100, and that just gives you an idea of how much bigger product we can get through our plumbing package. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Nicholas. That's great yeah. information. Mm. To be honest, is it is it yes. is you like cake on all? Yes, because we've got a lot of calcium magnesium mm. in our product. Mm. Yeah. All right. uh, that uh, isn't dissolved. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if there's anyone that has any questions. You know, you know, for sure, but. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. <laughs> uh, we've got some guys here sitting in the, in the chairs here. But, um, but no, uh, if, if there's anyone that's wanting to ask any questions, please put a comment um, or raise your hand on Zoom. You know, we can definitely, uh, we'll definitely want to ask, we want to answer your guys' questions. Mick, do you I'll have anything? Mike. I was just going to say, I'll put my email in the uh, chat box so if people wanted to email me questions and then I can copy you in on my replies, Brian, if that works for you. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. But the one side note that I have on the, on the Sentinel system, because we utilize the Sentinel system on our U.S. research farm, and, uh, you know, it's amazing how accurate that system is. And so our, part of our, our research farm, we also do some local work with FFA chapters. And in the past, uh, we used to have to weigh all the fertilizer going on to the FFA plots so that our provider could donate that to the FFA organization. And now that we've switched to this Sentinel system, we're so close in, in our accuracy, they, the supplier says, you know what, forget about weighing it. It takes time to weigh that. You guys just go ahead and, and tell us how many gallons you used on that FFA plot, and we'll use that for our, for our numbers. So that tells you how extremely accurate the Sentinel system is. All right, so we actually have a, we have a question here, um, Nicholas. If I'm correctly speaking, this is actually coming from um, I actually I went out of it now. Uh, it was it was to do with the Surefire syst liquid system. Does not need to buy a new planter to fit this kit to it? No, you don't. It's an add-on. No. We can add it to the planter. Correct. Uh, Mick is right. They've been one of our testers on uh, when we start doing uh, individual row control, and uh, since the beginning. Uh, those guys have been testing that product on their farm, and they have had good luck uh, with that product as well. It shows in their trials uh, how well it works or doesn't work on some trials. <laughs> well, when I make things screw up on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it, it does exactly what I ask it to. That's, a, that's okay. At least it's there by Mick. Mick I know Mick hand, handles it pretty well, so... Um. Sorry, I'm just, yeah, we just have one, we only have one comment here. Um, so, to be honest, is there anything anders? Or you have anything in your thoughts? Yeah, it's 100%. We will also go and read what you have and contact us. Yeah. Yeah. Now, thanks for the, uh, for the time. Uh, enjoyed it, and it was a privilege to be here. Yes. No, perfect. Uh, Nicholas. Uh, thanks for spending the time and, and you know sharing us you know this information with us, especially on the Surefire. I think there's a great opportunity for it here in Africa. Um, and then you know on Mick, Mick and myself, you know uh, we do appreciate you guys joining us. And you know 
Uh, Mick and I will be back again tomorrow and uh, we'll be discussing. Mick, I don't know, do you have anything that you want to share before we go? You know, I, I think that uh, as we go through this week, uh, there's a lot of learning opportunities and I think it's important to take the time and, and, and learn. Uh, one of my things that I say every day when I get up in the morning is I need to learn something new today. And if I don't learn something new, I'm not worth the oxygen I'm using. So yeah. to me, take the time to learn because it's it's valuable and, and it helps us move forward. Perfect. Perfect. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, to every all the viewers that was watching today, uh, please uh, like, share it, and, and as well, comment in our boxes, and we will come back to you. And uh, we will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, you guys there <laughs> overseas. <laughs>